All right, let's look at some examples. We want to describe the bonding in CH2O. And we want to know what the Lewis structure is, what types of orbitals or hybridization is present. <clears throat> so go ahead, you can pause the video, try and come up with your Lewis structure. We've seen this example before. So we have a double bond to an oxygen between the carbon. We'll have two pairs on that oxygen. And then we'll have hydrogens bonding to the carbon. So from previous sections we would be able, or previous knowledge, we would know the arrangement of electrons. We have one, two, three arrangement of electrons, so that's trigonal planar. The molecular geometry, we have three atoms there. We don't have any lone pairs on the central atom. So our molecular geometry will stay the same. To look at the hybridization, one way you can do it is you can know and associate trigonal planar with sp2. And the other way is you can, it's kind of a trick, but if you list out the possible orbitals that we can hybridize, and we essentially look at what our, uh, how many sigma bonds we have. So we have this one bond there, two bonds, three bonds. We have three sigma bonds, three first bonds formed, so we would need three orbitals. So we underline our first three, we would hybridize those to have sp2, because we underlined two p orbitals. So we have sp2 hybridization. Whoa, hybrid. Di Z Shen. That was ugly. So there's sp2 hybridization on carbon. Oxygen is also hybridized. I'll show it in a different color. How about pink? If we look at our oxygen here. It has one area, two areas, and three areas of electrons. So we would have one, two, three. So we still have sp2 hybridization on the oxygen atom. That's why we put those two lone pairs kind of off to the sides. And that's because this oxygen has an arrangement of electrons of trigonal planar. So the uh, electron pair here, electron pair, and that first bond, roughly 120 degrees. So if we were to draw out these overlappings, we have carbon here. I'm going to try and color code this. Carbon is sp2 hybridized, so it's going to have three lobes. For the sigma bonds, oxygen for its sigma bonds will also be sp2 hybridized, so it will have three lobes. And hydrogen can't hybridize, so it has the 1s orbitals that overlap there. So we have a sigma bond, a sigma bond, and a sigma bond. 
For oxygen over here in our two lobes, we have our lone pair of electrons. So in this, uh, in this molecule here, we have three sigma bonds. Then we have our double bond. We need to represent this double bond. And that's going to be a pi bond. So we're going to have a pi orbital, or p orbital, excuse me, above and below. Oxygen will have the same thing. And we're, it's hard to draw because your shapes get really funky. But we do have overlap then of those pz orbitals. So that gives us our pi bond. All right, let's look at an example just looking at counting our pi and sigma bonds, and then we'll make our life, we'll take a uh, complicated molecule, give us a challenge, uh, make sure we can count, which you all know uh, on a good day I might be able to count. All right, so we want to know how many sigma and pi bonds are in acetic acid. So first you'll want to draw out your molecule and vinegar is acetic acid, CH3COOH. So with practice, you'll get to know and understand when you have that CH3. That's making uh, carbon like this. Hydrogens will be kind of on one outside. Then we'll go to that carbon. This COOH is a characteristic of drawing it out like that of a carboxylic acid. When you move on into organic chemistry, you'll learn that a carboxylic acid is a carbon that has a double bond to an oxygen and then to an oxygen and a hydrogen. And then we'll have two lone pairs on that oxygen. Yes, this is a strict Lewis structure. No three-dimensionality has been shown. Okay, we're just looking at our sigma and our pi bonds, and then we'll look at our hybridization. Sigma bonds, or sigma bonds are our first bonds. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven sigma bonds. We only have one double bond, so we only have one pi bond. If we look at our hybridization around each of our carbons, we list out our orbitals. We have S, P, 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 D, D. Around this carbon here, I'll mark him with blue. We have one, two, three, four, areas of electrons, so we need four orbitals. So this carbon here is sp3. We had to underline all three p orbitals. Our other carbon, I'll do in the, I don't know, dark pink color. We have one, two, three, areas of electrons. Remember the, the double bond is going in the same direction, so that counts for one area of, election, uh, area of electrons. So we need three areas of electrons, so three orbitals. So the hybridization in our other carbon that has that double bond to the oxygen is going to be sp2. The next example will be a much more complicated, bigger molecule to this. It's kind of fun to give us a challenge. Um, I will also give you a brief introduction on how to take a stick figure drawing, so one where we leave off the carbon atoms and just draw lines, how we can convert that into a structure like this so that we can assign our um, hybridization.